everyone. I cannot believe it's the end of the year. So I thought it might be fun to jump on camera and do a little bit of a Q&A to bookend this amazing year. So if you want me to do more of these throughout the year, let me know down in the comments below and I can schedule a few more of these Q&A videos in a few months or so. So let's begin. So I thought it would be good to start with a few basic questions that most people ask me. And the first one is, where are you from? And well, I was born in the Philippines. My mom and I actually immigrated here when I was about two or three. My stepdad at the time was in the military. So once he retired, I went into school and I spent the majority of my childhood in Mississippi. Uh, so when I graduated from high school, I moved down here to Orlando to attend Full Sail where I majored in auto engineering. And when I finished there, I moved to London a few years later to finish my bachelor's degree. So I've always loved traveling. Actually, the first time that I ever left the country was when I was 16. I spent the summer in Denmark with a pen pal, and now as I think of it, I can't believe that my mom let me do that, but it was a completely different world back then. After London, I moved to DC where I lived until Snowmageddon of February 2010. And after that, I just had to move into the sunshine. So later that year is when I moved down here to Orlando. Uh, so in 2013 is when I met my husband, Noah. And in 2015 is when we rescued our first dog together, Angel Bear, who we rescued from Orange County Animal Services. Then in 2017 is when we got Winter, who we adopted from a friend of a friend who was down here on the floor sleeping with her bone. And then just this past year is when we rescued Mac, who you can also see down here on the floor. So he's Mac, like Mac Chuck or like Mac and Cheese. So the next question is, what inspired you to start a YouTube channel? So the first spark to start a YouTube channel um, happened after our trip to Iceland. I was researching a ton about Iceland and found this really great channel called Iceland with a View, and then another great channel by Alan Sue, which I love. So shout out to Jeannie and Alan for inspiring me to become a YouTuber. And I specifically remember being on the flight home and looking out at Iceland as it was like drifting away and I thought, Gosh, that was an amazing trip. And I wouldn't have been able to do it without all of the amazing research that I did on YouTube. It occurred to me that, you know, wait, wait a minute, I live in a vacation destination. So I thought, I wonder if people would love guides and videos like this for places in Florida. And well, here I am. So when I first started my YouTube video, it was just me scripting, filming, and editing everything. And then about a year ago, my husband and I saved up enough money from YouTube and from other funds. So he was able to quit his job in engineering to be able to help me full time here on YouTube. So at first I taught him everything that I knew about editing and YouTubing and he just kind of took it and ran. And now I, I couldn't do this channel without him. He truly is the, the backbone of this YouTube channel and I couldn't thank him enough. So thanks baby. <laughs> Um, so what am I looking forward to in 2023? I've got a ton of plans for 2023 and the first thing that we're actually going to be working on is completing our absolute guide for Universal's Islands of Adventure. So if you don't already know, our absolute guides are beast to create. We spend hours and days just getting footage for everything that you can experience in the theme park. And then it takes us hours and days and weeks afterwards sometime putting that all together. So it can take us a month to just make one absolute guide, but we're really excited to get that started for Islands of Adventure to be able to hopefully get that up by the end of January. So that is the goal for us. Once we have that done, we're going to start working on updating the absolute guide for Magic Kingdom once Tron is up and going. But besides theme parks, I really look forward to heading back to more beautiful beaches. Um, there's also a few additional springs that I still have on my list, as well as a few like small charming Florida towns that I think that people 
absolutely would enjoy. But if there's anything that you want me to cover in 2023, let me know down in the comments below and I can see what I can do to make that happen. Now let's get into some of the questions that some of you have posted for me. So this YouTube question is coming from a diary of a basic BW and they ask, what camera do you use? Because video is crisp. Happy holidays. And thank you so much. That's actually a question that I get quite a bit. I actually have an arsenal of cameras in my bag. My main one is this one, which is my Canon EOS R that's paired with a Sigma 24 millimeter 1.4 lens. My secondary camera is this one over here to my right. So this is a DJI Osmo Pocket 2, which I'll grab really quick. So I'm gonna mess up the shot. Oh, 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 and it's also plugged in because it's dying. But this DJI Osmo Pocket 2 is a godsend. It's supposed to be really small and discreet, but it's the one camera that tends to get the most attention while I'm out and about. It's basically a camera on a gimbal, so it really gives me a, a really smooth shot whenever I'm walking, and um, it's all in this small little package, which I love. So if you see those smooth, like, panning shots on my video, most likely it's probably from my DJI Osmo Pocket 2. And my third camera is my original Osmo Pocket, which is right here. I originally was going to get a gimbal to go with my Canon, which was my first camera. But when I thought about it more, gimbals are always really cumbersome to carry around. And the camera itself can get pretty heavy, like carrying it around in amusement parks. So I thought these would be a lot more convenient for me on a day-to-day -day basis. And I could not be happier with them. So I love these. Oh, I also have a few additional cameras because I'm like, the crazy camera lady. So we just got this Insta360 X3, so I'm still learning it, but I have been able to kind of test it and play around with it in the most recent videos. So you may have seen it in some of our videos, like Night of a Million Lights, for instance. But we're still learning about it, so <laughs> we're still kind of trying to figure out some of the quirks and um, its its pros and its cons, but it's been a really fun camera so far. My other additional camera is this action camera, which is actually recording right down here. This was my original like underwater camera. So if you saw any of the underwater shots that I've taken over like the last couple of years, that is what this camera is. Um, and it's actually an, a DJI Osmo action camera. But I'll plug a link to all of these cameras in the description below. So if you do want to take a closer look at them for yourself, if you are thinking about starting a channel. All right, so next question. Next question is from Estefir2930 who asks, are they paying you for this? Because I feel like they should be paying you for this. And this is a great question because I do pay my own money for most of the events and locations that we do go to throughout the year. I have been invited to experience a couple of Halloween events in the area, like the Haunted Road and Scream and Stream, for instance. But that was it's really about it. Actually, our big goal for this channel is to make it onto the Universal Halloween Horror Nights media list. We haven't been big enough yet to be able to be considered, so I'm really hoping that, fingers crossed, that this will be our year. So if you're watching this Universal Orlando, I would love to be considered for the media list for Halloween Horror Nights. But I am a YouTube partner, so I do receive a portion of the revenue from the advertisements that you do see on the videos, but it's definitely not enough to live off of. But it does keep us afloat to continue to make videos, so we usually end up about even at the end of the year considering everything that we've done. But if you do enjoy the content, the best way to be able to support us is by hitting the like button, uh, sharing the content with your family and friends, and of course, subscribing. But if you would like to help support create future content for this channel, I do have other outlets like Patreon and Buy Me A Coffee, as well as you could drop a super chat in the comments below. It's like leaving a tip if you found a particular video like especially helpful. And everything that I do get from all of these outlets, I always invest back into the channel to make more content. Uh, so next question. So the next question is from Veronica Kooner, who's actually our cousin. And she asks, 
What are some spring break ideas for kids that are not Disney? First off, if you do come down for this spring, you'll definitely have to let us know. But if you are looking for a few things to do besides theme parks in Orlando, I highly suggest looking at some of the water parks in Orlando. Aquatica, for one, is really great. They have a ton of different slides and pools that are really fun. Uh, Universal also has a water park called Volcano Bay that's really cool if you haven't made it over there yet. But if you are looking for something that is truly unique, definitely look into Discovery Cove. Discovery Cove is a part of SeaWorld and it is a bit pricey, but it's this all-inclusive park where you can swim with dolphins, snorkel with stingrays, and there's also unlimited food and beverage. So I have been planning on doing a video on it. So I'm really hoping that we might be able to have the budget this year to be able to squeeze it into the schedule. So we'll see. If Discovery Cove is not an option, there are a few really great family-run animal parks like Gatorland, which is a popular one. If you haven't had a chance to go to Gatorland, I highly recommend it. It's a lot more than just gators and it's a really fun experience um, for the entire family. Also, if you haven't gone to Icon Park yet, uh, you definitely want to go and check it out. It's more than just the giant wheel. There is Madame Tussauds and the Sea Life Aquarium, as well as the Museum of Illusions, which I haven't had a chance to try it, but it looks really fun. We actually are heading back to Icon Park to cover it this year. So if you're interested in seeing more of what it's about, definitely keep an eye out for our future video, which we should have probably out in February. If you've already gone to Icon Park and Gatorland, then I highly recommend going down to Wild Florida. They have a few different experiences like the airboat ride and the drive through safari where you can feed giraffes. There's also a whole alligator park that has a ton of different animals. And I could go on and on, but if anybody else has any other suggestions, definitely make sure to drop them down in the comments below. All right. Next question. <laughs> and my next question comes from Yangamashu on Instagram. And she writes, happy holidays. I love your channel. Thank you so much. Besides Orlando, what are your top three favorite Florida cities and why? And this is an awesome question because I would have to say that my very favorite city in Florida so far has got to be St. Augustine. I love St. Augustine because of all of the city and the amazing architecture. It's an absolutely beautiful city, especially during the holidays, during Nights of Lights. It's truly a sight to see. They also have some amazing locations like the Fountain of Youth, as well as the Castillo de St. Marco, which is really amazing. And I know that I probably pronounced that incorrectly which a lot of you like to tell me in the comments that I pronounce all of my Spanish things incorrectly. My Spanish pronunciation is really horrible, so I'm so sorry and my dearest apologies. <laughs> next, I would have to say my next favorite place is Siesta Key. Siesta Key is a really cute little beach town that an old friend of mine introduced me to and I just love it. It has the powdery white sandy beaches and has a cute little downtown area. It's one of the places that I love to go to just just escape and have a great relaxing beach weekend. Last but not least, I would have to say that another one of my favorites is Mount Dora. My husband Noah and I actually moved out here a couple of years ago. We just wanted to get out of the hustle and bustle of Orlando and go someplace a little bit quieter. It's about an hour north of Orlando and I just loved the awesome festivals that were out here. There is the um, art festival that happens during Super Bowl weekend and there's just, it's a really cute little artsy town and I just love it out here. Yangumashu also had a follow-up question, which is what are three places in Florida that are on your bucket list? So the first place that I would have to say is on my bucket list is the Florida Cavern State Park. When I first discovered this place, I knew I just had to go here because how often do you see caverns in Florida, right? So it's definitely on my list for hopefully either this year or next year. Next, I would have to say is the Florida Keys because 
Can you believe that I haven't made it to the Florida Keys yet? Right, I'm like a Florida travel channel and I haven't even made it down there. So every single time that we do attempt to make it down to the Florida Keys, something always comes up and then we just end up having to push it back for another year or two. So I'm really hoping that within the next couple of years that we're able to, to make it down there. So we'll see. The next place that I would have to say is on my bucket list is Sanibel Island. We actually had it on the schedule to go to Sanibel Island this coming spring, but because of Hurricane Ian coming through and just devastating the entire island, I just don't know if it's going to be available for us to be able to go over there. It's definitely one that we do have on our list. I just don't know when we will be able to actually make a video on it, but it is definitely one that I want to cover within the next few years. All right, so the next question is from Wo Davy on Instagram. And and Woe Davies actually a fellow content creator in Central Florida. He covers a lot of similar events as me and has a great personality. So if you have a chance, definitely go and check him out. And Woe Davy asks, what are your three favorite SeaWorld events? And I would definitely have to say my favorite SeaWorld event hands down is the Christmas event. I love the decorations and the shows and everything is just so well done. So it's one that that I always look forward to on a yearly basis. So the next one would probably have to be um, Howl O' Scream because I am a Halloween nut and I love anything Halloween and I think that their their scare zones are really fun. So my second one would probably be Howl O' Scream. And then the third one it would definitely be Electric Ocean. I love all of the costumes and their firework display at the end of the night is amazing and definitely worth waiting for. So if you ever go to SeaWorld during the summer, make sure to stay for summer nights because it's a really fun event. All right, next question. So the next question is from Mr. TMI Cat 7 I'm so sorry if I totally butchered that. <laughs> but he asked, hello, Krista, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Thanks for always sharing the best content on YouTube. Wow, thank you. So my question is, what town would you recommend in Orlando for a single person? I'll be moving down to Orlando in January 2023. And first off, Wow, welcome to Orlando. I'm not quite sure if you're interested in places to hang out as a single person or areas to live. If you are looking for nightlife, then you'll definitely want to head down to downtown Orlando. They have a ton of really great clubs and restaurants. And there's also Church Street and the Wall Street Plaza that has a lot of really cool bars. The whole area is just really lively. Another really great place for nightlife is City Walk in Orlando. If you head there after 6 p.m. there's free parking and in the evening City Walk has a ton of really fun bars and clubs and it really does just come alive so if you want to dance the night away and meet a, a lot of fun locals and tourists combined City Walk is a really great choice. All right next question. All right, so the next question is a really long one from Franny Baroa 1973. Franny, I hope you don't mind. I'm gonna kind of paraphrase this one. She gave me a little bit more of a backstory. Okay, so Franny is gonna be driving down here to spend the week with her husband and her 19 month old, and she's interested in a few places that they would be able to take her. The first thing that I thought about was the Peppa Pig Park at Legoland. This park was made for little kids and they have a ton of fun like playgrounds and splash pads. We haven't had a chance to cover it yet because my husband and I don't have kids so we thought it might be a little weird if we just went there without kids but we have been to Legoland. They do have a lot of rides that are geared more towards the little ones like a whole Duplo section that has a, a lot of little playgrounds and, and places for them to play. So it's definitely a, a couple of places to go and check out. If you want to check out some place indoors where you don't have to worry about the weather, definitely check out the Crayola experience at the Florida Mall. They have a ton of activities for little kids and the best part about it is that it's all indoors where you just don't have to worry about it raining or anything like that. So it's a great place to check out. All right, next question. 
All right, and the very last question of the night is from Bookworm Tash. And Bookworm Tash asks, I am going to Wikibachi Springs. Do you have any suggestions on things to do in the area or places to eat? By the way, enjoy the channel. Thank you so much, Bookworm Tash. I really appreciate it. Okay, Wikibachi. I'm assuming that you are heading to Wikibachi for a day. And if you are, there's actually a ton of things to do at Wikibachi itself that you may not have to go out and find other things to do in the area because there's kayaking and then there's the mermaid show which you definitely can't miss make sure to see the mermaid show because it's awesome there's also a lot of animal encounter shows and of course the water park has a couple of slides and a natural lazy river that you may want to spend the entire day in wikiwachi itself they do have a couple of quick service restaurants there as well as some ice cream and a few bars so there's a few options now it's not amazing cuisine but there is definitely some decent quick service meals that will get you through the day. So if you are spending just the day there, you may just want to grab a bite in one of the quick service meals. So then that way you can spend even more time in the amazingness that is Wikiwachi, which I just love. Well, that was all of the questions. Thank you guys so much for posting those questions for me and all of the amazing support and love that you guys have sent throughout the year. I can't tell you how many times your amazing comments have gotten me through the rough times where I'm having to wake up at 4 a.m. in the morning to like go out and film another YouTube video. Just seeing a really fun and encouraging comment from one of you just keeps me going on that day. So I really thank you guys from the bottom of my heart it truly means the world to me and the very last thing on the agenda is something that we actually put together for you it's just a little tribute to all of the amazing love and support that you all have left throughout the year so thank you guys so much for everything this channel would not be where it's at without you of course and i just wanted to say thank you for all of the amazing comments that you guys have left on all of the videos throughout the year so thank you guys so much for everything i can't wait to see you in the new year Should old acquaintance be forgot and never brought to mind? Should old acquaintance be forgot and days of old lang syne? For old lang syne, my dear, for old lang syne. Talk a cup of kindness yet for days of old lang syne. And here's a hand, my trusty friend, and here's a hand of thine. We'll talk a cup of kindness yet for all.
All right. Woohoo! Did it in 42 minutes. <laughs>